Hey everyone, and welcome to Skill Capped. In this guide, we're going to be explaining some advanced cross replacement techniques that the pro player Fnatic Boaster uses in order to play at the highest level of Valorant. Unfortunately, not all of us have been gifted with insane mechanics to just flick onto the head of any opponent that appears on our screen. So having consistent techniques that lower the amount of work needed to find easy headshots is invaluable for us average humans. We all know the classic advice given surrounding cross replacement, such as just aim at head level is thrown around a lot, but a great player will also know when to break some of these rules to find advantages that other players would not capitalize on. So some days your aim will be off and it will feel like you're just missing flick shots that you know you would hit 9 out of 10 times if it was any other day. But in this guide, we will go over cross replacement techniques that will aid you in raising the floor level of your aim by making frags much easier. And if you're serious about improving, then go to skillcap.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you how to win more gunfights, master your agent, and so much more. Backed by our ranked improvement guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcap, improve the KDA, and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Before we analyze some clips of Boaster's clean crosshair placement techniques, we have to quickly establish what crosshair placement is exactly. This is mostly for the newer players that don't understand this concept or for advanced players that are looking for a refresher on this topic. Crosshair placement is the ability to place your crosshair in a position so that your time to kill on an opponent is the least amount of time necessary if they were to appear on your screen. In general, this means having your crosshair placed in a way to be ready for a headshot since it's already poised for this positioning. This all comes down to how skillful you are at visualizing how an angle will look like before you see the setting and how will a potential enemy be placed within this environment. Envisioning this encounter right before before you set up your peak is the key step in how successful you'll be at punishing an enemy in these situations. When your crosshair placement is not fully developed, using map landmarks as references is a common tool to finding how to gauge head level or how far you will need to move in order to expose the specific angle you want to peak. A great example is when you are an attacker at Grass on Haven peeking into Garage. The middle line of the barrier placed on the doors that enter into Garage are perfectly at head level for an enemy standing on the ground. Many of the maps in Valorant have similar map props that have decals to give a reference to where head level could be if you are struggling to find the perfect height. The more you play the game, the more this reliance on map decals to find where to aim or how to move for peaks will be offset to your intuition. The whole process becomes subconscious and your crosshair placement will naturally become better. This doesn't mean though that you shouldn't focus on your crosshair placement at all times, but instead it will just be easier to do so. To prove this point, let's view a clip of Boaster covering the flank after his teammates plant the spike on C site of Haven. Boaster's team have successfully planted the spike onto C site and find themselves with two frags as well. Boaster has a quick glance at the minimap to see the positioning of his teammates and notices that the C long flank is currently not covered. The enemy omen smokes the top of C long, causing Boaster to not have complete vision of the bottom of C long. Realizing that sitting in the smoke would not allow him to gain control of all of C long, he's forced to push through the smoke. Right at this point, the jet's timing is perfectly in sync with Boaster and they spot each other at the exact moment he leaves the smoke. With little to no movement on his crosshair, Boaster one taps the jet. This is a real game example of how your crosshair placement can be so good that you don't even need map landmarks to use as a reference since he's built the muscle memory over countless matches. Boaster was blocked by a smoke and was still able to traverse down C long with perfect crosshair placement. But now that we have discussed the basics of crosshair placement, let's move on to some more advanced techniques that we can apply to our own game. Let's start with one of the most common of these advanced techniques, called slicing the pie. This technique is actually a real life tactic used by the military when clearing rooms by using the corner of a wall or doorframe as an access point and periodically moving to your left or right to gain vision of a new segment of the room. This process of acquiring vision in chunks by swiveling around the access point is what gives the tactic the name slicing the pie, since it's similar to how you would cut slices out of a delicious pie. The main reason why this tactic is so effective is because it hyper focuses on the aspect of gaining information while committing committing the least amount of visibility of your body as possible. Cutting the angles that you need to clear into segments makes it much more manageable when compared to clearing the whole room in one massive sweep. This benefits our crosshair placement by allowing us to cut up giant areas with multiple positions that we have to clear into a step-by-step -step process of placing our crosshair onto one angle, confirming that no one is peeking it, then moving on to the next angle in the theoretical pie that we are fully cutting up. This tactic can be even used in open areas where there aren't clear positions or angles that enemies could be playing, but you want to peek in reasonably sized chunks. 
This specific instance of slicing the pie is quite useful when you aren't sure where the enemy is positioned and are afraid that they might be playing an off angle in the middle of the open. Now that we know what slicing the pie is, how do we do this in Valorant? Slicing the pie boils down to a three-step process that is repeated as much as you need to in order to clear the locations you want. First, pre-aim at the angle you want to clear through the wall. Then, move your crosshair to compensate for your movement so that when you do strafe to expose the angle, your crosshair will be placed onto the angle automatically by your movement rather than having to move your mouse hand again. This means you must visualize how the angle will appear on your screen when you strafe left or right. Second, side strafe until only your desired angle that you want to clear is just visible. The key here is to find that sweet spot of having just enough vision of the position you want to fight while not overstepping too far and exposing yourself to other angles at the same time. Thirdly, if an enemy does appear on your screen, flick your crosshair to their head to adjust for any placement errors if their head is not directly on your crosshair already. A great way to practice this is by going into the Spike Diffuse training course. Unlike CSGO where the community can create custom practice maps that are able to mimic real life positions people would play in competitive maps, Valorant does not have this luxury. But the Spike Diffuse training course is a decent alternative to training the three step process of slicing the pie even if the map layout is different to the maps you will be playing in your rank games. All you have to do to get there is open Valorant, click the play button at the top, click the practice button at the bottom, select Spike Diffuse, then press enter range. Once you are loaded in, select your favorite agent, then press F3 to select which difficulty you would like to practice on. If you are just starting out, easy or medium should suffice. Even for me, hard difficulty is pretty tough since the bots have insane reaction speed and can one-tap you if you get unlucky. Once you've decided which difficulty you want, press F3 again, then shoot the start box on the menu in front of you. After the course resets, buy your rifle of choice and full armor, then proceed past the starting line. You'll know the course has started as soon as you hear the spike activate. Now, you want to thoroughly clear every possible angle that the enemy AIs may be holding by using the slicing the pie method, checking positions one by one without exposing yourself to others. At first, you won't know exactly where the AI spawn points are, but you will quickly get a feeling of where they can be and start to build a mental flowchart as you clear the bomb site. Just remember that the end goal is to defuse the spike, so you are placed under a timer during this training course. Once you master this exercise, your crosshair placement will be insanely clean even when tasked against daunting bomb sites that require multiple places to be checked. Now that we have a rough idea of this technique, let's watch Fnatic's in-game leader Boaster use this exact method in his own ranked games. Our clip starts with Boaster crossing A lobby to sewers on Haven. As he walks down the sewers ramp with the left wall to his back, we see him pause for a brief moment. This is Boaster starting the first step of slicing the pie. He sets up his crosshair to look through the wall towards the left side of the bottom entrance of sewers. Once his crosshair is ready to his liking, he strafes left just enough to get a clear view of the left side of the doorway. Once he confirms that no one is present, he then proceeds to walk down the ramp until he reaches the next angle he wants to clear, which is the tucked corner to his right. You can then see him repeat this exact same process again of aiming through the wall towards the angle while taking into account his strafe movement. Once set up, he strafes and visually confirms no one is hiding. If we let the clip continue, we even see him do this for the top of the short A ramp towards the bomb site. In the span of 8 seconds or so, we see Boaster use this technique 3 times to ready his crosshair placement for spots the defenders could have been playing. Fast forward a bit later on in the same round and Boaster finds himself walking into mid window. But before he just mindlessly walks into window, he recognizes that a potential threat could have made it into the room and starts the slice the pie process again. First, he does this for the right corner of the window room, then again for the back left corner of the window room. As he peeks the final corner corner of the mid window room, the enemy cipher is spotted and Boaster uses the final step of slicing the pie which is to flick to adjust any crosshair placement errors. A clean vandal one tap falls into Boaster's lap. This methodical approach to crosshair placement gave Boaster a way to clear mid window without overexposing himself unless he was already poised to take an aim duel. It's quite clear that there is a method to deciding where to place your crosshair when peeking. Now that we have a tool that helps us with crosshair placement for peeking aggressively into common angles, how do we deal with someone trying to peek into us instead? This is where wall hug crosshair placement comes in handy. The term wall hug stems from how you use the corner of the wall as your anchor point for your crosshair placement. Your crosshair ideally should follow the wall you are using as if your crosshair is hugging or tethered to the structure. The distance between your crosshair and the corner itself will vary depending on multiple different factors. To simplify, the key elements you must consider are how far your opponent will be if they appear on your screen, the type of peak they will choose to do, and how you are positioned relative to your opponent. First, let's discuss how the distance of the enemy may affect your crosshair placement. As many of you may know, when farther away from a corner or any piece of cover compared to your opponent, you are able to see more of the opponent's body before they can have a view of you. This also affects the speed at which they move relative to your own point 
of view. The farther away they are, the slower they will move as a result. If you know that enemy is planning to peek you from quite far away, hugging the wall a bit tighter with your crosshair might be advised since you do have a bit more time to react compared to a close peek where they are hugging the wall with their body and moving much faster. This transitions into our next point of the different types of peeks that enemy could do. Normally, there are three types of peeks that people will choose if they want to fight you. A walk peek where they are holding shift and moving into their duel, a normal peek where they full strafe then counter strafe as tight as they can while still being able to fight, and a wide peek where they are fully strafed to the length of around two or three normal size peaks in order to throw your crosshair placement off. With all of these peaks having different speeds to their nature, you will need to find how much distance your crosshair placement needs away from the wall in order to hit that perfect shot when they do arise. Walk or normal peaks would be best punished with tighter crosshair placement whereas wide peaks require wider crosshair placement in order to counteract the opponent's overextended movement and faster speed. This is all based on your own reaction times and how you personally feel when it comes to dealing with these peaks. A wide crosshair placement for a pro player may seem way too tight for you to react to because you haven't practiced those specific scenarios as much as they have. Find what lengths of crosshair placement work best for you and don't be afraid to experiment with different lengths when you do feel a bit more quicker in the future. Lastly, let's talk about how your positioning can affect your crosshair placement when it comes to the wall hug technique. A theory that many advanced players will understand is the difference between off angles and on angles. A quick definition of what an off angle is, is an angle that is not usually a common position that is played, usually because it lacks cover or a quick route to safety, but in exchange can be used to catch your opponent off guard for a free kill. When using an off angle, it's safe to assume that the enemy are not likely to hard clear your location, which means that it's ideal to have your crosshair placement a bit wider since there's less of a chance that they will use a normal tight peek, but rather will probably just fully sprint past you by accident. The opposite can be said for on angles. If you are playing a common on angle, the enemies are more likely to use a normal tight peek to want to clear these meta positions since they don't want to overexpose themselves, causing you to place your crosshair a bit tighter to counteract this. If you want a way to practice this wall hug crosshair placement in a low risk environment, enter the range and pick Sage as your agent. Make your way to the firing range, then shoot the practice box on the screen. This should spawn plenty of targets on the range. Now, all you have to do is use Sage's barrier orb to create different angles to practice this wall hug crosshair placement. By using Sage's artificial wall as our anchor point for our crosshair placement, we can practice how tight or how wide our crosshair needs to be in order for us to hit a clean headshot on the target dummies. Unfortunately, the movement options for target dummies is limited, so in order to practice this, you will have to move on your own to mimic the feeling of the opponent walking into your crosshair. Still, this is a fantastic way to work on your crosshair placement. Don't be afraid to get creative on the placement of your sage wall and how far you are from the target dummies. This drill is a perfect starting point to mastering how to use the wall hug crosshair placement. Enough talk. Let's see how one of the world's best in-game leaders puts this technique to use. We're going to be breaking down Boaster's Phoenix on Haven. After popping his run it back and completely destroying the enemy Sage, he starts making his way towards C site through C Link. While running through C Link, he barely spots the C player and calls it out for his teammates. Understanding that the C player can hear him stomping while he approaches into C site, Boaster changes his crosshair placement to the wall hug technique. This is because he knows that the enemy could not have made it into one of the safe positions with cover and is most likely just using the corner of the wall as his only barricade. Boaster even holds the corner of the wall a bit wider since there is a possibility that the omen may retaliate with a peek of his own to surprise him. Once his phoenix ulti is about to run out, he pre-fires the last possible angle the enemy could have been which is below logs and he finds himself a cheeky frag onto the omen. Boaster's crosshair was directly on the omen's head before he could have even reacted with a shot of his own. This clip shows that even though the wall hug crosshair placement technique is usually used for defensive situations, it can be used offensively whenever you feel like there is a chance the enemy may be playing an off angle or that they are willing to swing into you as you peek. The past two techniques we just went over talk about how to make it so our crosshair placement is perfectly on the opponent so we have as little adjustment as needed. But the wide swing crosshair placement is basically the complete opposite but equally as strong. Wide swing crosshair placement essentially is placing your crosshair in the direct center of all the angles you are exposing yourself to at the same time. Then, using a flick to readjust your crosshair if an enemy does appear on your screen. Even though you technically aren't using the most perfect crosshair placement since you are banking on the flick to hit for your frag, the reason why this is a strong tool to use is because when you place your crosshair in the direct center of all the angles, you're hedging your bets by having the minimal amount of distance needed to flick for all possible outcomes. This technique only should be used if you are in a situation where you are forced to peak multiple angles at the same time, or if you believe that your flicks are crispy enough for the day to hit the shot needed to make this work. With the knowledge of how crosshair placement works for a wide swing, how do we practice it? Our best advice for this is to create custom lobbies of maps you want to practice wide swing peaks for and look around to see if there are any positions on the map that you could see yourself using this technique on. Let's use split for our example. Place yourself at default on B site. Hug the pillar and face towards B main through the wall. Then, much like the three step process we used for slicing the pie, set up your crosshair so that when you strafe to the right, your crosshair perfectly lands in the dead center of the hallway to B main at head level. Continue this process until you can comfortably achieve this crosshair placement. 
Now, all you have to do is find similar angles on the map that you could practice this exact crosshair placement for. Try to look for parts of the map that have a hallway-like structure to them since these are the easiest to use as a reference point for a wide swing crosshair placement. This may seem like a tedious process, but practice does make perfect at the end of the day. Let's cut the chit chat and move on to some clips of Boaster displaying how wide swing crosshair placement can be effective. For our first clip, we'll be going over Boaster at mid-window on Haven. Before Boaster is given a sky flash, he hears the enemy Sage use her barrier orb at B site. With this information, he knows that the Sage may be peeking on top of the wall or on top of mid site to get a top-down view of mid. Boaster plans around this by setting his crosser up to be horizontally centered in the middle of the entrance and at head level if the Sage were to be on the wall itself. He strafes out wide, exposing himself to multiple angles that the Sage could have been holding from the top of the wall. But, as we mentioned earlier, wide swing crosser placement banks on the fact that you can hit the flick shot since you are hedging your bets by placing your crosshair right in the middle. Sage wasn't present at this time, but we do have another clip of Boaster using this exact approach to find a kill. We've moved on to Split with Boaster now playing Sky. Our clip starts with a failed rush attempt by Boaster's team, and now they find themselves in a 2v3 scenario. Thankfully, Boaster is a player that's willing to narrate his thought process for us plebeians to have a better understanding of his gameplay. He says out loud that the enemies may peak ramp and that they need to find frags in order to even things out. He's gonna peak heaven, I think. We have to find kills now. I'm gonna hide. With this overarching plan of trying to find a frag on a potential ramp peak, he states that he's gonna hide and try to time a player that may be pushing ramps. After pausing for a few moments, he readies his crosshair in the center of the ramp and swings. As if Santa Claus was watching, he is gifted the perfect timing to peak the enemy rays and flicks for a clean headshot. This crosshair placement worked out flawlessly since Boaster was unsure where exactly the rays would be when he did peak ramps. So he chose to split it down right in the middle and prepare for the flick if necessary. Even though this was a superb timing play, it was the well-executed wide swing crosshair placement that finished the frag at the end. Good players are able to follow the general rules of Valorant, but amazing players know how to break these rules when it's appropriate. We've gone over a few major crosshair placement techniques that will surely help your Valorant game. But just as a quick bonus tip, let's go over crosshair placement with shotguns. As we mentioned earlier in this guide, crosshair placement is all about lowering the time to kill by prepping our crosshair in a way to readjust the least amount of distance as possible. This same concept applies to shotguns as well, but it's done in a slightly different manner. As many of you know, shotguns in Valorant shoot multiple pellets in a spread rather than using slug shells like in other shooters such as the Battlefield series. Since shotguns work this way, the vital factor to having the lowest time to kill when using these types of guns is by hitting the most pellets into your target as possible. The way we maximize this idea is by having the most surface area of the head and body of our targets in the spread of our shotgun. A common mistake that many players will make is that they aim their shotgun's crosshair directly in the center of their opponent's head. This is unoptimal because if you aim the center of your crosshair directly at their head, the upper area of the shotgun spread is firing pellets that are guaranteed to not hit the enemy at all. Lowering your crosshair so that the top edge of your shotgun spread matches the top of the person's head will help towards that goal of hitting as much surface area as possible. Shotguns are a deadly weapon when up close, so make sure you fully utilize its strength when you can. Thankfully, Boaster's stream has just the clip that showcases this concept to the fullest. We start the video with Boaster's Sage on Ascent. As soon as the barriers drop, Boaster throws a slow orb onto the entrance of B main. This is to delay any quick pushes from the enemy and to buy some time for Boaster to push up where his judge is most effective. While this is happening, his friendly Sova shoots a recon dart outside of B main which triggers the enemies to shoot it, giving away information that there's at least one attacker outside. Boaster uses this info to mentally prepare himself for a potential fight that could occur in the next couple of seconds. Not even 5 seconds have passed since the slow orb dissipated and two attackers walk across Boaster's screen. He fires a couple of shots before falling to the killjoy trading out the omen. If we take a closer look at Boaster's crosshair placement when the attackers did strafe into his field of view, we can see that there's little to no empty space within the judge's spread. More than half of his judge's crosshair is the head of Omen, while the other segment is aimed at his neck and torso. In another universe, this could have easily been a double kill for Boaster if the killjoy wasn't as on point to trade this frag out. Shotguns are extremely potent when used in this type of manner, but you have to make sure that your crosshair placement is still thoughtful even if you are using what most consider a newbie gun. And remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get more premium guides just like this one. We here at Skillcap want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.